for scriptures, we will consider both the Quran as well as Hadith as scriptures of Islam. First, let's look at the Quran and consider its distinguishing characteristics. First of all, it is said that the Quran was revealed over a 23 year period, beginning with Muhammad's encounter with an angel, the angel Jibril or Gabriel, usually in anglicized. And so it was not a one moment, one time, but every so often Muhammad would be com commanded or communicated to reveal such and such as on such as such of an occasion the words from God and these were memorized compiled and passed down from one generation to the next by his followers the Quran is considered to be a revelation from God okay, so that which discloses and communicates the will the message the teachings of God okay so a revelation from God it is considered an eternal book or hidden tablet. Now, the, the word mother book, Um el Kitab, is Arabic for mother of the book. It is, it is believed, it is understood that with God eternally are his teachings that he wants to communicate to humanity. And these teachings that are with him, this eternal book or mother book or hidden tablet, he communicates to the angel Gabriel, who then communicates to his prophet, in this case, the prophet Muhammad, who receives that inspiration or revelation and then articulates it in the Arabic language, his mother language, his mother tongue, to the people around him, who then receive it and memorize it and, and pass it on. We'll look at this, this idea of revelation, inspiration, and the articulation of the Arabic in, in a later PowerPoint presentation. So the Quran literally means the reading, the proclamation, the rehearsal, or the recitation. Okay, so that which is read, read aloud, or that which is proclaimed aloud is the meaning of the Quran. And it's said that Muhammad was given to recite or read aloud these words from God, proclaiming it to the people. Now it's an oral book, first and foremost. In fact, when the Quran is in physical form as a, as a book, as a text, as a codex, more formally Muslims will call it mushaf, meaning, meaning codex or text, only when it's proclaimed aloud, when it's recited aloud, does it participate and replicate those words which Muhammad himself proclaimed and communicated to the to the people? Right? He wasn't he wasn't writing down with his hand the words from God according to Muslim understandings of their history, but rather he was proclaiming aloud that which he was inspired to proclaim. And so only once proclaimed aloud and people are listening to it reverently and it's recited in a beautiful way. This is the Quran itself. It is only the Quran as well when it's recited in the original Arabic. When you have a translation to other languages, whether it be old Near Eastern languages such as Hebrew or Persian or Sanskrit. These are considered interpretations of the meaning of the Quran. So it's only true the Quran when it is in this, the same sounds, the same language in which it was revealed by Muhammad himself. Okay, so so there's a problem, right, where most of the Muslims in the world do not speak and understand Arabic as their mother tongue. In fact, even those who grow up with Arabic, it can be difficult for them too, since modern dialectical Arabic is 
fairly distinct from the classical Arabic from 1400 years ago. And so even those who grow up with an Arabic language have to do quite a bit of study to really be able to understand the nuances of the language of the Quran. So, but in these these translations, right, Muslims can use translations to help them get at and understand the Quran, but it must be considered that these are translations and it's not the Quran itself. The Quran was compiled into 114 chapters. Each of the each chapter is called a surah. And the chapters or surahs are of varying lengths. The entirety of the Quran is roughly the same length as the New Testament of the Christian scriptures. It's said that it's somewhat less, but it's pretty close in length to the New Testament to give you a relative point of comparison on the length. The Quran is not compiled by chronology. In other words, you cannot read it and get a sense of Muhammad's life and what's going on in his life to be able to, to follow a kind of storyline of the revelation of the Quran. Um, it's, in fact, it's pretty messy where uh, it's not any sort of rhyme and reason in connection with when they're revealed within Muhammad's 23-year career. And this was not considered a problem by the compilers of the Quran, whether Muhammad commanded it to be in this length or was later the later generation of, of compilers and those that systematized it and wrote it down. Uh, it was not them, uh, it was not considered a problem by them that it was what we'd say out of order because each revelation was considered an eternal communication from God that had no bearing or weight for what was necessarily going on in Muhammad's life or in the, the life of the community or, or response to those who disagreed with him and, and attacked him and his prophethood, that these were eternal revelations from God that at any times, any occasions are useful guidance from God. However, this is problematic for historians who are trying to get a sense of Muhammad's life from the Quran and have a difficult time reconstructing his life with the Quran. In fact, it's a very, very difficult source to reconstruct aspects of his life from. Now, sometimes I encourage my students, uh, to, if you get a Quran and want to read the Quran, to read it backwards. In other words, start at the end at chapter 114. Well, read chapter 1. It's, it's a very brief and the most popular chapter, as we'll look in the later slide. Then skip to chapter 114 and read chapter 113, 112, 111, and so forth. In other words, that's because the, the Quran was compiled more by length, and those chapters which are longer, were put in the front of the Quran, and those that were shorter were put in the back of the Quran. But shorter chapters, according to what historians, both Muslim and non-Muslim historians, what they can figure out is that more often the shorter chapters were revealed during the Meccan period, and the longer chapters were revealed during the Yathrim or Mendinan period. Hence, if you're going to read it a little bit more on the timeline in which they were revealed, reading it in this kind of um, one, skip a bunch, 114, 113, 112, this approach give you a little bit closer to a chronology. Individual, individual verses are called ayat, which means signs. And ayat also means miracle. Okay, so ayat means signs, miracle, or verses. And indeed, each verse is considered by Muslims to be a miracle, miracle from God and a sign of God, God's presence. In other words, it is said and the Quran itself proclaims that no human being could reveal a book of such power, majesty, wisdom, and insight that it must be words that come from God 
um, so distinguished is this book from the writings and articulation of mortal human beings like myself. So this idea is often called ijaz, which is that term, the inimitability of the Quran, inimitability, meaning that it cannot be imitated. Okay, So no human being could imitate and reveal something of, with the same characteristics of the Quran according to Muslims' belief. Rather, that it has its characteristics is its supreme proof that this book is from God.